The American Indian Movement, or AIM, is an activist organization fighting for the rights of Native Americans. It was founded in 1968 to address issues facing the Native American community, which includes discrimination, poverty, and poor quality housing. The man you are currently seeing is AIM activist Leonard Peltier. He has been in prison since 1977 and is currently serving two life sentences for the murder of two FBI agents. All of this is for a crime he claims that he did not commit. Leonard has tried two times for parole, once in 1993 and more recently in August of 2009, and both times he has been denied. Authorities feel that releasing him will diminish the seriousness of the crime. However, many civilian protesters feel differently. He is scheduled to be released from prison on October 11, 2040, at the age of 94. He was convicted of murdering Ronald A. Williams and Jack R. Kohler, both FBI special agents, between 2.30 and 4.30 p.m. on June 26, 1975. This is otherwise known as the Pine Ridge Shootout. Special agents Kohler and Williams were not the only men killed during the shootout. AIM member Joseph Stunts was killed as well. Dino Butler, Rob Robidow, and Leonard Peltier were all tried for killing the agents, yet no one was tried for killing Stunts. The shootout itself occurred on the Jumping Bull Ranch, located within the Pine Ridge Reservation. According to multiple testimonies from both sides, the agents were not the first to shoot. By the end of the shooting, which lasted two hours, the agents' cars had a combined 125 bullet holes. It was determined that they were killed by an AR-15 rifle, a major piece of evidence in Peltier's trial. The FBI report states that Kohler and Williams, who were driving separate cars, entered the reservation with a warrant for the arrest of Jimmy Eagle. He was to be charged with kidnapping and assault. They began to follow this red and white suburban thinking it may be him, but the passengers turned out to be Leonard Peltier, Norman Charles, and Joe Stunt. During the period before the Pine Ridge shootout, but after the Wounded Knee incident in 1973, the Pine Ridge Reservation was in a time of distress. Tribal President Dick Wilson created a group of vigilantes named Goons, Guardians of the Oglala Nation, to help enforce his ideals. A members felt that they were whitening their culture and called them apples, red on the outside, but white on the inside. The murder rate was an astonishing 170 to 100,000 people, which was 150 people higher than Detroit, the murder capital of the nation at that time. It is believed that conflict between AAM members and the goons caused this period of unrest. The occupation and siege of Wounded Knee, South Dakota ended peacefully. Harlington Wood Jr. was the first government official to enter the town since the beginning of the occupation. He broke the ice and helped prevent further bloodshed. On May 5, 1973, both sides agreed to disarm and the government took control of the town. It is not certain whether the FBI and U.S. Marshals surrounded the town before or after the AAM took over the town. The government sent officers to Wounded Knee in order to prevent a civil disturbance from escalating. When the AIM responded to the presence of the government negatively, a standoff ensued. The AIM has made the claim that they were going to have an open meeting in Wounded Knee, and the government quickly set up roadblocks. They view the government as being the aggressors and believe that they were only defending themselves and their land. February 27, 1973, members of AIM occupied the Pine Ridge Reservation in opposition to the Oglala Tribe Chairman. The FBI surrounded the reservation with armored vehicles, weaponry, and military personnel. The bloody standoff lasted for 71 days. James Forsyth was relieved of his duties after the massacre of Wounded Knee in the 1890s. 150 Sioux Indians were killed within minutes, and a total of 300 died as a result of the massacre. Injustice to and subjugation of Native Americans has prevailed throughout American history. On December 28, 1890, Forsyth led the 7th Cavalry to remove the Sioux tribe from Wounded Knee by rail. When an Indian warrior was seized, his gun accidentally went off, causing the troops to shoot at the tribe. The injured and dead were thrown in mass graves and left to die in a snowstorm. 
For most people, the story of Native American oppression ends with the Wounded Knee Massacre in 1890. The reality is that this is still an ongoing issue, as made obvious by the case of Leonard Peltier. Native Americans are facing discrimination, poverty, and poor housing as a result of this oppression. To put this into perspective, on the left is the house which you may live in, and on the right is the house typical of reservation life.